Hi, and welcome to uh, using overlays in We Video with Mr. Pudgemo. So today we're going to learn how to um, layer items in a We Video so that you can put things over top of other things and set things as the background. So we're going to start with the video tracks and the audio tracks on the left. These are very important for layering because they follow an order on the layers. So your base layer is your audio track, and that's where you're going to um, choose your audio. And you're going to just drag that down and put in an audio. We can hit play, get a little preview. So that's just a little, a nice little tune. Um, then we're gonna start with a video one and video two. Now, we're gonna have three layers on this. So the base layer is always the video one track. So that's gonna be your background or your your main video that's going to stay there all the time. So, in order to demonstrate this, we're just going to do text. We're just going to do backgrounds, and we're going to do um, still pictures. So, I'm going to just drag a picture down, and I'm just going to use this cloud one. I'm going to stretch it to fit my tracks and to be the entire um, uh, the to match the entire audio track. All right. Um, now, the video two track is going to B, let's let's have a picture. I'm going to go to my media and I'm going to scroll through my media. Um, I'm just going to grab a picture of, let's say, let's just grab this Stonehenge picture. Now, as I put that in and I play my preview, you see you're not going to see the clouds until that picture runs out. And then the clouds can come back to be invisible. So video two track overlays or t is in control. It's the first one shown. And then underneath that is going to be your cloud. Now it's still there, but it's just not visible. So we see how that works. Now, if I wanted to, I could get into this editor on the Stonehenge picture and I can scale it down a little bit. And what that's going to do is that will let me move that object around and off to the side. And now you see my base layer is now visible. I'm going to save changes. And now my cloud layer is now visible on the rest of this track. So as I hit the play button, my clouds are going to move around. But my, my stone hinge is a solid picture. All right, so that is the second layer. Now the third layer, I'm going to hit the little plus button and we're going to go to, we're going to insert a video three track. You don't want another audio. We want another video. So we're going to click on that, insert a third video track. Now, if I wanted to, I could overlay another picture, but in this case, I'm going to go to a text box. Text box. And I'm going to grab just any old box and put that in. And then I'm going to size that to match my Stonehenge picture. And let's let's pretend we're doing a Stonehenge project. Stretch that out to the end again. And then in my text box, I'm going to open up that editor. And now you see on the preview, the text box is over top of the Stonehenge. So now you've added a third layer. So the first layer is the clouds. The second layer is Stonehenge. But the third layer is my text box. If I had a, a picture layer, let's throw that in just to demonstrate. Let's put this picture of the forest in over top of it. Now, watch what happens with our layers. Now, the, the forest is a full picture. So now, the forest is in charge. The forest is the first one seen. And now I go back down. So I could do the same thing with this forest and resize this one and scale my forest off to the side and overlay it on Stonehenge. And now I have three layers. I have my background layer with the clouds. I have my video two layer with Stonehenge, my video three layer with the forest. And I hit save for that. But now if I want that text box in there, I would insert a video four track, video four track. And instead of having that text box here, I can drag it up to the video four, and then I can take this forest and stretch it out 
so that it is overlaid with the Stonehenge. And then I can add this text box, get into the editor for that one, and scale this one down. Actually, let's add um, this has six different fields that you can you can uh, manipulate. All right, so I'm gonna hit save changes on that. But now my st my text box is still right in the way. And I would love for that text box to be up here and have the clouds in the background. So I'm gonna edit that back, back and go back into the editor. This time I'm gonna go to the transform tab up here and I'm gonna scale it down a little bit. Just remember how I showed you. I'm gonna scale it down a bit and then I'm gonna drag it up so my text box is showing right in this empty space up here in the left corner. Now, I'm gonna hit save changes. Now, I have a cool text box where I want it on my screen. I have my original Stonehenge with an overlay of the forest. And if I make that, hit the play button, and now I get my preview with my text that pops up and then goes away. And then I could even go as far as to add another box. Another text box here, and I can actually put information Stonehenge is very old. And I can see that one, and I can have a series of text boxes that are again overlaid and up in this corner and have my my still pictures visible. So now I go back to my preview, watch my first text box fade away, and then switch to my second text box and have that one go. And then I can move to a third text box and a fourth text box, and I could really give a lot of information. I could also shorten these pictures and throw in have different pictures on the track that follows the text boxes. So instead of this one, I can go to, let's go to Google Images, switch it to Images, and say, let's look, look for something for Stonehenge. That one's a good aerial view of Stonehenge, but this one, this one is like a, a um, a completed drawing, so it's not the real, but it is a uh, um, a recreation of the original Stonehenge. So I'm going to put that one right and spell it right, Stonehenge, and hit save. I'm going to take that one and a file under my my media, upload or import that file, and I grab my Stonehenge, and then. Once that finishes, that little blue line goes until it's finished up importing. Now it's done. I can take that picture and throw it down in that track. Of course, I have to go back into the editing because now that picture is on the third track. So it's full screen and in charge of my video. So I have to go back into the editor for that one, scale it down the same way, and then position it back into that same corner. And then I can hit save changes on that one. And now, using this technique, I can have boxes, a catchy little tune, changing the picture. And now my forest goes away, and here comes my recreated Stonehenge. All right, so there are the layers of your video. Have fun with that and be creative. This is a really great way to show creativity in class, especially when you're doing history reports or something on science of a cell. You could do the cell and you could do all the little parts of a cell that pop up. Really cool stuff. So thank you for watching and I'll see you again next time.